So in this video, we will be discussing the brief history of your periodic table of elements. And then we would also do some classification of your elements according to their physical and chemical properties. Okay? Now, the periodic table organizes the elements in a particular way. So a great deal of information about an element can be gathered from its position in the periodic table. So, understanding the organization and plan of the periodic table will actually help you obtain basic information about each of the known elements. Okay? Now, in the 19th century, chemists actually began to categorize the elements according to similarities in their physical and chemical properties. Okay? So, these different studies actually resulted to our modern periodic table. Okay? So, we would be highlighting some of the significant chemists who contributed to the development of the modern periodic table. Okay? So, first we have Johann de Bruyner. Okay? Johann de Bruyner was known for his triads. So, he grouped his elements into three, wherein he observed similar chemical properties and orderly physical properties. So, for example, we have lithium, sodium, and potassium. So, these are the alkali formers. Then, you also have your chlorine, your bromine, and iodine. So, these are the salt former. So, these are examples of the triads of the Briner. Okay. So, next we have John Newlands. Okay. So, for Newlands, he had a different way of organizing your elements. So, instead of trees, he arranged your elements by eights or he arranged it in octaves. Okay. Because he noticed after arranging the elements in order of increasing atomic mass, certain properties actually repeated every eighth element. Okay. So, he pointed out that Every eighth element in this grouping would actually have similarity, so it would have resemblance. And he suggested that we use an analogy using the intervals of the musical scale. Okay? So next we have Dimitri Mendeleev. So Mendeleev was actually known as the father of the modern periodic table. Okay? So he published a table of the elements organized by increasing atomic mass. So as you can see in the figure here, so this is the original periodic table by Mendeleev. Okay? He had a contemporary, Luther Mayer. So Mayer at the same time published his own table of elements organized by increasing atomic mass. Okay? So both Mendeleev and Mayer actually arranged the elements in order of an increasing atomic mass and both left vacant spaces where unknown elements should fit. Okay, but Mendeleev was credited because of his periodic law. Okay, so Mendeleev stated that if the atomic weight of an element caused it to be placed in the wrong group, then the weight must be wrong. Okay, so Mendeleev was actually confident also in using, he was confident in using his table that he actually predicted some of the elements that were not yet discovered during that time. Okay, so... Now, the modern periodic table that we are using nowadays was actually modified by Henry Mosley. Okay? So, he actually determined the actual nuclear charge for the atomic number of the elements and he rearranged the elements in order of increasing atomic number. Okay? So, because of Mosley, all of the hard work of the previous chemists were now arranged into the modern periodic table that we are using now. Okay? Now, those are some of the chemists who contributed to the development of our periodic table. Now, let's go to the grouping of elements. So, the elements of the periodic table can be divided into three main categories. We have the metals, the non-metals, and the metalloids. So, as represented by the colors, the green ones are the non-metals, the blue are the metals, and then we actually have the metalloids as represented by the purple um, boxes. Okay. So, properties of metals... So, this is just a recap. I know you already knew this. So, metals are actually good conductors of heat and electricity. They are shiny, they are ductile, and they are also malleable. So, a chemical property of metal is its reaction with water, which actually results in corrosion. Okay? Now, we have your non-metals. So, these are poor conductors of heat and electricity. They are not ductile or malleable. They are brittle and break easily and they are dull. And most of our non-metals are gases. Okay? Then we have the metalloids or the metal-like elements. So they have properties of both metals and non-metals. And the solids can be shiny or dull. Okay? So they also conduct heat and electricity better than the non-metals but not as well as your metals. Okay? 
Now, elements in the periodic table are also grouped into families, or which are the columns, okay? So, elements and families have similar properties. Now, elements are also categorized into periods or horizontal rows. So, they don't have similar properties, but on a separate video, you would see they have a periodic pattern of characteristics or properties, okay? Now, families are columns of elements. So, elements in each family have similar but not identical properties. So, all elements in a family have the same number of valence electrons. Okay? So, yung families are the groups. So, yan. As mentioned in the previous video, group number would tell you the number of valence electrons. Okay? Now, for the periods, these are the horizontal rows. So, the properties actually change greatly across each given row. So, the first element is always an extremely active solid while the last element is always an inactive gas. Okay? Now, let's go to the different families. So, first we have the group 1 or the alkaline metals. So, these are found in the first column of the periodic table and they have a single electron in their outermost level. So, they are shiny, they have the consistency of clay and are easily cut with a knife. And they are the most reactive metals among all the metals in our periodic table. And they react violently with water. So they are also never found as free element in nature and they are always bonded with another element. Okay. So next, let's go to group 2. We have the alkaline earth metals. So they are also never found uncombined in nature and have two valence electrons. Okay. Examples of these are magnesium and calcium. Next, we have the transition metals. So, at the middle portion of our periodic table, you would see them. So, in these include those elements in the B families. So, these are the metals you are probably most familiar with. So, I use characters from movies to associate them with your um, transition metals. But this is Quicksilver, Iron Man, then the Tin Man. Then you have copper. Wala hong character for that. Anyway, so the metals, the transition metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. Okay, so some transition metals are actually used um, as paints, as color paints. Okay, so um, they have one or two valence electrons which they lose when they form bonds with other atoms. Okay, so they have properties similar to one another and to other metals, but their properties actually do not fit in with those of any other families. Okay, so many of your transition metals combine chemically with oxygen to form your compounds called oxides. Okay. So next, we have the boron family. So this is named after the first element in the family, and they have three valence electrons. They are found in the group three. So it actually includes a metalloid, which is boron, and the rest are metals. Okay. So it includes the most abundant metal in the Earth's crust, which is aluminum. Next, we have the carbon family. So the carbon family have four valence electrons. And it includes a non-metal, which is carbon, metalloids, and metals. Okay? Now, carbon is actually the element known or called as the basis of life. Okay? So, we would be discussing this on another chapter or on another video. We have your um, carbon compounds or organic compounds. Okay? So, next we have the nitrogen family. So, they, they are named after the element that makes up 78% of our atmosphere, which is nitrogen. Okay? So, it includes non-metals, metalloids, and metals. And they have five valence electrons. Usually, they tend to share electrons when they bond. So, they do covalent bonding. Okay? So, these are the examples or the members of the nitrogen family. Your nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, and bismuth. Next, we have the oxygen family. So, they have six valence electrons and they most share electrons when forming compounds. Okay, so oxygen is the most abundant element in the Earth's crust and they, extremely, they are extremely active and combines with almost all elements to form your oxides. Okay, now we have the halogen family. They have seven, seven valence electrons. Which, um, which explains why they are the most active non-metals, meaning they wanted to bond 
with other elements kasi nga they are lacking one valence electron for them to be stable okay so it includes fluorine fluorine bromine iodine and astatine so as mentioned they only need to gain one electron to fill their outermost energy level okay usually they react with the alkali metals to form salts and last we have your noble gases so they are called noble because they belong to the highest class okay because they rarely bond with other elements diba yung mga nobles yung mga like the kings and the queens they rarely bond with others okay yung ano lang yun, yung dati noong araw anyway so the noble gases um one important property of these are their inactivity okay they are inactive because the outermost energy level is full they don't need others to make them stable Okay, because they do not readily combine with other elements to form compounds, the noble gases are also called inert gases. Inert meaning unable to move. Okay, so they are found in small amounts in the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, so the noble gases include your helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. Okay, so next you have the rare earth elements. So these are composed of the lanthanide and the actinide series. So most of these elements are called trans um, in, um most of the elements here are synthetic or man-made okay so in case you're not updated we now have four new elements that complete the seventh row of the periodic table so we have nihonium muscovium tennessee and organeson so nihonium was named after the discoverers at riken national center for accelerator based science in japan Moscow, Moscovium was named for um, in recognition of the Moscow region to honor the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research. Now, we also have um, Tennessee to um, recognize different universities in Tennessee. And then you have Aganesa named after Professor Yuri Aganesan, whose studies are actually based on transactinoid elements. Okay. Now, these are the different classifications of your elements in our periodic table. So, in our next video, we would have the different properties or the different periodic trends of your elements. Okay? So, I hope everything is clear with the periodic table of elements. So, if you have questions, you may comment them down below and I'll be doing individual responses. So, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!